These are nice name brand 3D printers from Bamboo Labs that range from two to $400. And this right here is a $67 3D printer from Timu. Is there a big difference? We're about to find out in today's video after a word from today's sponsor. We interrupt today's video to give you today's sponsor, GVG Mall. GVG Mall is an awesome online marketplace that has tons of discounted keys such as Windows keys. Whether you have Windows 10, 11, Pro, Home, it doesn't matter, GVG Mall has you covered. I mean, come on, I know y'all are tired of seeing that watermark in the bottom of the screen. And it is so simple. All you have to do is purchase the key, copy and paste it, and then boom, you have an activated Windows. So guys, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and go to GVG Mall, use the code down below, save some money, let's get back into the video. All right, so this right here is the Easy 3 K9 that I bought off of Timu for $67 after tax and shipping. So I know we've been getting a lot into 3D printing here at the office and I'm already looking at this and this looks very <laughs> daunting. Um, how would this compare in terms of like setup and user experience versus something like, let's say the entry level Bamboo Labs printer? So one thing I can tell you about Bamboo Labs, cause uh, we have now gone through four of their printers. They all come out of the box, almost ready to print minus like some minor setup. And when I say setup, I mean like taking some screws out that help um, shipping stability. This one right here, I think we're gonna be building almost from scratch. So, so didn't you have one of these similar style <laughs> 3D printers back in the day? Yeah, this was uh, probably one of like our very entry level sponsorships kind of where I think it was AliExpress if I'm not mistaken. They basically gave us like a small budget of like a hundred bucks and said, you know, buy something on here for an ad spot. Um, and so I remember I picked out the Anet, I think it was the A8 or A6. And uh, it was a lot bigger than this. It was honestly more of a standard size printer, but I think even that one was, it was over hundred dollars at the time and it wasn't great. I mean, back in the day, it felt really good. But now that I've discovered brands like Bamboo Labs, I'm just like, wow, these printers that you have to manually calibrate suck. Yeah, just looking at this as somebody who definitely doesn't do much with 3D printing, after we got the Bamboo Labs printers, it does make it more entry level friendly, but it doesn't come with a super entry level friendly price tag. I mean. Up to $400, some people are building budget gaming PCs with mm -hmm. that instead of buying a 3D printer. So I would say if this works, again, it looks like it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but if you're up for a challenge, this might be fun for you. All right, yeah, so to go over a couple of the parts here, if anyone wondering, um, this right here would be the extruder. So this is where the filament's actually to come out. Uh, this is the Bowden tube where the filament would go into. They do give us a little bit of uh, white PLA. What's cool about this printer is it does just use the standard 1.25 millimeter filament. I wouldn't try anything besides like PLA and maybe PETG. This looks like it's gonna be, I guess, our, our base. So whether that's, because uh, we have three different motors here for the axes. I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work, but I know that this right here would be the print bed. So this is the size limitation of your print. I mean, the smallest one I've ever seen by far. Uh, here's our manual adjustments. That's one thing that you're gonna get with a lot of new 3D printers is non-manual. So it does all the adjustments itself. This looks like our filament spool holder in some form or another, yeah. So it's gonna hold our spool of filament. Um, we get a couple of tools here. What all do we get in here? And this one I don't think is gonna have Wi-Fi or anything crazy like that. I think it's literally only USB. So you basically put this little micro SD card with your prints on there and then you can choose, which doesn't even have an LCD display. I was just going to say, like, how does this actually work? Do you just like hit print I, and set a profile maybe? Like do you have to maybe program these cards? There's like two cards. So I don't know if one of them has like a OS on it or something. They both kind of say the same thing. Please format the TF card and try again when not printing. Wow, that's literally, <laughs> it's a warning saying if it's not working. Oh, that's great. Now the printer itself, it's just powered by like this little DC port. So many watts this thing. Look at the size of the power brick, 12 volts at two amps. So 24 watts, Jesus. that is pretty crazy. Now, like I said, we got a DC port. This is like the OG USB type B. So I guess you can actually hook this up. Oh, like it comes with it. So we can actually hook the laptop up um, straight to it. So we'll have a little use case for our Lenovo laptop in the room. This is to push the filament in or out. I guess you just basically select, oh wait, there's a mode in the middle. So I guess this is like gonna force the motor forwards. This will force it backwards. And then the middle is probably just for printing. And then we have, we do have a micro SD card reader, which. So what's the point of the. Oh, okay. So those are just so you can put them in your PC. Ah, yeah. there you go. So micro SD only, no USB, but you do get this. So I am glad about that. So I don't think we'll have to be super archaic with the USB drive. We can actually uh, use this and use something like um, Kira. Maybe, I wonder if we can get the Bamboo Labs app to work. This would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. All right, so Matt, I think we're gonna teach you how to build a 3D printer day because I don't even know how to do this yet. So uh, <laughs> let's learn. Yeah, let's do it. Looks like for step one, take one and attach to the base. Okay. Build. That's actually kind of easy. Clip the platform onto the white part of the axis. Ah, oh. the click, it was so satisfying. It was just really tight. All right, well, we're gonna replace this one then. 
I was wondering how that was going to stay secure. That feels pretty good. All right. Oh, it just slides in through the back. Like oh, that. oh, yeah, the one on the okay, okay, okay. All right. Install X axis five. It says be sure to lock screws tightly. Okay, well, where the hell? I, now I don't see a screw hole. You gotta make sure you push all the way to end, they say. Oh, yeah. You're in. There's X, it's labeled. X, okay. Z, Y. Examine your zipper. Install filament holder. Some and filament she's built. built. Is that it? That, that actually be. really wasn't that hard. Let's go ahead and power this up and see where it goes from there. Now one thing that's pretty cool is I am actually using Ultimaker Cura, which I'd say is probably one of the most popular 3D printing softwares out there. Um, it works with virtually any printer, um, even if it's not an Ultimaker. Uh, now this printer did not have a preset that I could find. So I basically had to kind of make a custom printer. And at first it was not working because there was no firmware. I am actually using the included uh, blue USB cable so that I can print press this, print via USB, which is what I'm currently doing. Now, if this was a nicer printer, it would actually show like, uh, maybe even video of the print happening, but all we get with this is just the print percentage. So we're already 6% in. Um, you can do basic things like move the bed around. We can't right now because it's printing, but it's cool if you need to do any changes or whatever, add your glue. You can move the hot end out of your way and everything with um, just a touch of a button. This is what the actual print looks like. You can actually see what each layer um, is going to look like as it builds up in the software. And this is really any slicer software is going to have these features. I read there's a couple other softwares that work just fine with this printer, but Ikea like, is definitely the most popular. I did have to use that little strange USB they included. Um, and that had some type of, I guess, firmware driver. You can see here, it has like a profile. Cause at first, like I said, with just doing a custom preset, it did not work. I had to actually use the little USB flash drive they included. And then once I opened that, it opened its own Kira, uh, which seemed to just work. So I'm not gonna question it too much. The fact that I'm in Kira and I'm printing makes me happy enough. So let's go ahead and keep printing. Guys, I can't believe we're actually doing it. We're right now 3D printing the most basic of all 3D prints, the Benchy, which is basically just a little toy boat uh, that shouldn't take too long, although it is estimating two hours for this printer. And normally one of this size in like a nicer Bamboo Labs would should only take like maybe 30 minutes or so. But one of my major complaints so far is this, the filament holder is not great. I don't even think this, actually, yeah, I know this would not hold a full size 2.2 kilogram spool, which is standard. So you're gonna have to buy like smaller spools or custom make your own stand, which, hey, not the end of the world. I wish the Bowden tube, which is this tiny little white tube right here, I wish it was longer. Normally you want it to kind of come out to where the filament goes straight into it so you don't get this mess, which I'm gonna have to kind of babysit this print to make sure that we don't get any type of binds because the motor is not that strong. This filament will easily start to slip and stuff and then our print's gonna get messed up. I am having to use glue. So yeah, I'm just using Amazon Basics glue. Uh, you can also buy like name brand um, 3D printer glue, but honestly anything works just when these beds aren't heated, they really need something to help them adhere to it. I tried a couple prints without using any glue and every time instantly that first layer would just come off. So once the first layer is done though, that's usually the scariest part. From there, it's typically smooth sailing, but we'll find out with this Benji. All right, so this is the, the first attempt here. Um, right now it's kind of glued down, so I'm gonna do my best to get this off without just destroying it. But it, it definitely, um, <laughs> Hey, it printed the boat. Yeah, I'm like kind of destroying right now, so I'm gonna have to use like a knife or something. But as you guys can see, it is it is pretty holy. Um, there's definitely a, a whole lot of voids and stuff here, which is not supposed to be the case. I'm gonna show you guys, I printed the same one on our Bamboo Labs A1 Mini, which is about a $200 3D printer with auto leveling and everything. And I wanna show you guys what that one looks like. But I think one of the big flaws of this printer is this. There's just, there's a lot of tolerance issues on this printer as you guys can see and that just makes it really hard no matter no matter how well you get this thing calibrated it's always going to um, have n usually typically not perfect prints unless you just really know what you're doing and maybe you know how to stiffen some of these parts up um, and you know it is 67 bucks so I don't want to be too harsh on it but this print definitely uh, wouldn't be super acceptable I'll show you guys what the Bimbu Labs did so here's the A1 Mini which I also need to add that this printed a lot faster this print took only about 47 minutes and I will say the Bamboo Labs printers and the Bamboo Labs app is very accurate on time and filament use. So this one uh, called for about 19 grams of filament and only about 47 minutes and that's exactly what it took. And as you guys can see, 
The detail on the Bimboo Labs printer is just insane. Um, the other printer recommended, or it, it suggested it was gonna take about two and a half hours, and I think it actually ended up taking like three or four at least. It took a really long time. We even have some text in the bottom. Really nice textured heated plate, so I don't have to use any glue. Um, the way I just took it off was exactly how every print goes. You don't have to put any adhesive or anything on this, which I think makes these printers amazing. They also have built-in cameras, so you can actually watch your print happening. And they even have things like error detection. Um, they have auto leveling beds so you don't have to ever level the bed. All right, so we're trying number two of printing the Benchy boat because the first one uh, did not come out the prettiest, but it did come out. Um, so this time I changed some settings. Before I basically just ran all factory settings, which I think we were printing at like 60 millimeters a second. I decided to lower that to about 45. I made it to where it's gonna print a little bit thicker lines because this thing doesn't seem to love very fine lines. And then I was kind of just adjusting the bed on the fly. I actually prefer to just start a print and then just do the best you can to not mess up the print and just adjust the bed because if you try to do the bed adjustment programming where it basically goes to each point I found that it typically is just never accurate it's better to just start printing and basically see what happens so let's hope that this one prints a little nicer all right guys so I tried a lot of different things on this easy thread k9 printer and honestly I just cannot get good results. I've tried lowering the print speed. I've tried changing the quality settings. I've tried changing the nozzle temperature, really everything I possibly could think of. And you can see here kind of some progression where I got like some slightly better prints, but still not great. There goes that one. Uh, but the Bamboo Labs, I mean, once again, just comes out perfect. And I'm not trying to only show Bamboo Labs. There's a lot of other really good name brand printers out there. But long story short is this one so far has just been a headache. And if I was just getting into the 3D printing hobby, I think I would, uh, be pretty fed up with this and probably think 3d printing kind of sucks another print that I tried testing out was making some Legos and as you can see uh, these ones although they do kind of work they're very porous they're very light they almost feel like paper here's the ones that we achieved in the bamboo labs that actually kind of click together and look like legit Legos so once again a pretty good size difference uh, I printed this on the bamboo labs an actual uh, threaded bolt which is pretty cool as you guys can see it definitely uh, threads and unthreads just like it should. And then even this test print on the Bamboo Labs printer came out pretty dang good, uh, really fast as well. Uh, this one, I think the laptop decided to die or something and it kind of just failed halfway through on the Easy K9. But as you can see, it wasn't really gonna turn out good anyways. So yeah, overall, I'm sure that you can tune this printer to be pretty good, but just because of all the loose tolerances and whatnot, I don't think it's ever gonna be a perfect printer for 67 bucks. All right guys, so I would say so far the $67 printer is kind of a pass and a fail at the same time. Now on the bright side of this printer is the fact that it's incredibly compact, it's incredibly cheap, you all know that by clicking on this video, and the fact that it is DIY friendly in the sense that we're able to put it together very easily. I mean, I've never built a 3D printer before and when we put this together it was very much slide this here, slide this here, and after that you were good to go. Now I know Jackson had more headaches in the long run when trying to get this thing set up and get the prints to be well worth your time but if you're somebody who wants to get into a DIY style and don't want to spend a hundred dollars and maybe wants to buy the cheapest possible option this may be a good option but there is a caveat to that point. So as you guys can see the con list is very long and there's probably more than I even wrote down but Number one, the 3D printer is not precise. Because of what Matt was saying about it being DIY and the pieces just sliding together, all of the motors and sliders and whatnot don't have very tight tolerances. And because of that, the printer just doesn't print very precisely. So you guys could tell by all of the Binchy prints I did, the Lego prints, nothing came out super precise. And it seemed like it lacked a lot of filament on every single print, no matter what settings I changed. You guys probably noticed the bed looks horrible right now. It's because it's a non-heated bed. So you have to use some type of adhesive. And because of that, it is horrible getting the prints off. While with something like Bamboo Labs, we can literally just pop the prints off, no glue needed. And the last two points is this printer does not have any Wi-Fi, it has no wireless capabilities, and that also means it doesn't have a camera built in. I know that's probably asking a lot, but something like even the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini, which is 200 bucks, comes with a built-in camera, it comes with Wi-Fi, you can print from your phone, you can print from your laptop. If the phone or laptop crashes, it doesn't matter because the actual print goes straight to the printer and it saves it and just prints it no matter what. And because of all those cons, you might think, well, it's a cheap printer, it might still be worth it. Well, for some people getting into a new hobby, I know me in particular, especially if it's something like this that would drive me crazy when spending a lot of time trying to get it to work, when I know if I just spend a little more money, I could have a much better experience. It would make me wanna stick with the 3D printing hobby 
be much longer because if I got something like this and it printed stuff like this and I was really frustrated after spending hours and hours on it, I might just give up 3D printing in general when you can spend a little bit more money, get something that's much more user friendly and allow you to stick into the hobby and grow with it as you go. I think the investment of spending more money into a better 3D printing ecosystem is much worth it, especially if you're trying to grow into the hobby and get used to 3D printing and how everything works. So of course, we're gonna leave some links down below. If you wanna buy this printer, you can, but we're gonna leave some of the cheaper printers from the name brands like Creality, Bamboo Labs, and MakerBot so that you guys can maybe have a better experience and less headaches overall. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's different video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Now, if you get a 3D printer, you're probably gonna need something that can run a slicer program. So check out PCBros.tech because we got some pretty cheap PCs that can do it. We have PCs that are not just gaming PCs, but a gaming PC would also suffice because you know what? While your 3D print is going, you're gonna play some games on the side. You just go Toasty Bros on checkout to save 3% of your next purchase. See you guys later, goodbye.